Hey, good morning, church. You are in for a treat today. We are going to have one of our awesome Sundays that we have got lined up for you. But first, before we get there, I want to say good morning. I'm glad that you're here. My name is Trent. I'm one of the pastors here at Northfield where our mission is to love God, love people, and make Jesus known. This is why we exist as a church. It's why you're going to see the big announcement in the grand opening of our Sumner Center today. You're going to see just the heartbeat of our mission through everything that we do today in regards to the Sumner Center. A couple opportunities I have for you just as we get going is we would love a chance to meet you. If you have been coming for a while and you've never really introduced yourself, we would love a chance to do that. And so what I want to uh, bring your attention to is what we call our digital connection card right in front of you. There's a little QR code. Just open up your camera, hold it there. You'll see a link pop up. Just click it and that will take you to our digital connection card. You'll see many opportunities on there, ways that you can serve, ways that you can get involved, ways that you can ask questions like, what does it mean to be a member here? How do I become a member? How can I take my next step in faith? There's plenty of opportunities on there for you. And as you hear us discuss us the Sumner Center and ways that you can be a part. That digital connection card is going to be the place for you to go to get involved and to get plugged in. Now, today I told you it's going to be an incredible day, and so we are going to get right into things, and we are going to begin singing and declaring and really praying out and asking God to open up the heavens, because right here in Sumner County, I think God is doing something incredible, and you are a part of that. And so, if you're willing and able, if you will, get on your feet. And as we declare together that God, would your kingdom rule and reign right here, that right here, right now, would you open up the heavens and allow us to see you and to see what you are doing in and through us as your ambassadors on this planet. We're glad that you're here. Y'all sing out with us. Your 
here again this morning. We really hope that through this next song and through the Summer Center, that people of our county are going to get to know the King of the Lord and really believe in the goodness of God. There'll be miracles and found miracles through this. church. 
And there's no better way to celebrate his goodness this morning than through communion. So why don't we take a seat? If you did not get a chance to grab one of these um, prepackaged communion, we would love if you would just raise your hand and we will get those to you. Um, guys, what a day, right? It's, the, it's, it's been a big day. It's been a long, long, long time coming. And, you know, today is, I'm thinking through this next song. I'm going to go quick today because I think that these lyrics speak for themselves. And actually, I left my phone over here. So you guys don't mind me for a second. I'm just a big goober, folks. Um, it's okay. It happens to the best of us and the worst, obviously. Um, so they say that this mountain can't be moved. They say that these chains will never break, but they don't know you like I do. There's power in your name. You've heard that there is no way through. We've heard the tide will never change. They haven't seen what you can do because there's power in your name. Chorus one just says, move the unmovable, break the unbreakable. God, we believe, yes, we believe for it. From the impossible, we'll see a miracle. God, we believe, yes, we believe for it. You see, what you're holding in your hand is a miracle, and what we're believing for for our community is a miracle. He's already done the hardest part. He came and paid our price. He paid our debt. He paid the way for people to find wholeness in our community right here, and it's all because of his sacrifice, body, and blood. This is what the Sumner Center is about. This is what we're about. We wanna see life change. And we know today that he can break the unbreakable. He can shake the unshakable and move the unmovable today because we know that he's good and he loves us. Let's take our communion together. Let's peel back that top layer. And if you wanna take that bread, it's just a reminder of his body that was broken for you and for me, for our wholeness. And after you take that bread, we can peel back the next layer and you'll find the juice there, which is representative of his blood, which was poured out for you and for me on a cross. And so Jesus, we say today that we are grateful for you. We worship you today, Jesus. Lord, you are the one who moves mountains. You are the one who paves ways through seas. Lord, we trust you today that you can do, you can do more than we could ever ask or hope for. And we're believing for it today. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and worship together.
Father, I thank you that you are a God that moves the unmovable, that breaks the unbreakable, that changes the unchangeable. Father, I thank you that although things around us change, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I praise you for what you have done, Father, and I thank you for what you are going to do in our lives. Father, we came to hear from you today, so I ask you to speak. We are listening, and I ask it in the name of Jesus. And the whole church said... Amen. Well, hey, you may be seated. I want to echo Trent's words of welcome to those of you in the house, to those of you who are viewing online. Thank you for blessing us with the gift of your time today. You know, today is not only the grand opening of the Sumner Center. Today is actually the 10th anniversary of Northfield Church. There's stuff going up here behind me that I didn't even know was happening right now. <laughs> Uh, anyway, as they are putting some uh, things up here on the stage, what a way to celebrate not only a grand opening, but 10 years of being a church together. It's hard to believe uh, uh, that uh, 10 years have gone by. Sometimes it seemed like a long time, and sometimes it seemed like it passed by very quickly. It's not too hard to know that uh, at Northfield, our mission is taken from the two greats in Scripture, to love God and to love people, the great commission and the great commandment. We state it like this, the Northfield Church exists to love God, to love people, and to make Jesus known. And we just happen to believe that one of the best ways to love God is to love people, serve people, and help each other. We pray big prayers. We act in big faith to anyone who has been to, been to Starting Point. So acting in big faith and in praying big prayers, even in the middle of a pandemic, we decided to move forward with plans to renovate an existing part of this facility into what would become what we are celebrating today, the Sumner Center here in Northfield. It's a center built around the mission of equipping and empowering individuals and families in Sumner County to become stable and thrive in their daily lives. The estimate needed to complete this vision was $1.1 million, and we debated so much during a campaign or during that pandemic. Could we do that? Would God, working through us, make that possible? And then a matching gift from the Station Camp Church of over a little over $400,000, we put it out there, and you guys, with their gift, ended up giving $1.2 million to completely pay for everything. That you're going to see downstairs today, and here we are one year later celebrating not so much what we have done, but so much about what God has done through people who are willing to just say yes. As some of you may have already noticed, the main entrance for the Sumner Center is on the Gallatin side of the campus, kind of the lower parking lot there. At one time, the building looked like this. Okay. Can you believe that? I put that up there because I could not find a picture of the building before we renovated it. So <laughs> I thought, well, that will uh, Well, now it looks like this. Okay, can we, is there a this back there going on? What's happening with the pro presenter? There it goes. Somebody might need a little help in getting that off of that fade in and fade out. But hey, that is what it looks like today. And today from 9.30 until 2 o'clock, you can take tours. You can either take a guided tour. And let me tell you, if you take a guided tour, that's going to be so much better than you just trying to walk through on your own. Because Bill and Mackenzie have put together a whole fact sheet of things that you're going to learn that you may not learn just walking through by yourself. However, if you don't want a guided tour and you want to go just on your own, you can do that. And there are facts around the building that you can see. And then from that center, you can make your way upstairs to the gymnasium area where you can have a piece of birthday cake celebrating our 10th year anniversary. Thanks, Amber McLemore, for making a huge green cake wherever you are, Amber, in the house. And you can meet some of our ministry partners, some who are going to be up here on the stage with us today. They're going to be at tables. They can answer any questions you have about the organization they represent. They will also be glad, I'm sure, to sign you up to volunteer and learn more about them. There are also going to be QR codes around the building that you can, uh, with your uh, smartphone, take a picture of that QR code and it will take you to a form where you can sign up to learn more about the Sumner Center. If you are not a QR code person, let me tell you there are these little half sheets they're at the welcome center they're at the I'm in station and they are going to be downstairs in the Sumner Center as you go through there you can take one of these you can fill out what areas of interest you have uh, give them to one of us drop them into the buckets that are down there and we will get back with you with those 
If you're in the auditorium this morning or if you're viewing online through our Northville app or uh, the uh, website, you can also reach that form by just filling out that digital connection card that Trent has already told you about. Well, to start our morning off this uh, today, we wanted you to hear from our Gallatin Mayor, Paige Brown. Mayor Brown has been a huge supporter of this entire project from the very beginning, and she has helped us navigate some of the hurdles that it took to get up and running. She is going to be with us. She is on a plane right now. She is going to be here for our 1 o'clock ribbon cutting. We're hoping for that 11 o'clock service as well. That depends on her flight. But she came in a little bit earlier and recorded a video that we wanted you guys to see. Hello everyone, I'm Paige Brown. I'm the mayor of the city of Gallatin and I am so honored to be able to say just a few words to you all today. I do plan to be at the ribbon cutting if my flight gets in on time, but this pre-recorded message comes to you after I've just toured your amazing Sumner Center. Y'all, this is just beyond cool. I mean, when I heard the plans, I thought this is gonna be so fabulous for our community, but to actually see the facility where the work's gonna happen, Oh my goodness, thank you from the bottom of my heart. I know that a lot has gone into this between Pastor Tom and the leadership committee that spearheaded all of this, but I know it boils down to the congregation. And so I just want to say a, a very, very sincere thank you to each of you, whether you gave a dollar or a lot more, because behind those donations, I believe that there are prayers because you've given prayerfully. I am amazed at the foresight that you have had to find a ministry that is unique and will be so meaningful to the citizens in our community and I know surrounding ones too. I can't imagine not being able to go to the dentist if I had a need. And so I'm actually standing in one of the dental offices and I see all the time on social media people that need dental care that can't afford it and can't find someone who will take payments. And if you've ever had an abscess, and I have, it is a miserable place to be. So thank you for taking care of those people who really are in need. And, and we know that dental health translates into real good overall health. So um, thank you for taking care of that need. I've also seen your food pantry. I've seen your children's room. I've seen where your job skills area is. Wow, you're doing amazing things. I am very blessed that you are in our community. Well, Northfield has certainly proven itself to be a dynamo, and I am so glad that you are in our city and in Sumner County. Um, please know that um, the foundation of your ministry means so much to the foundation of our community. I've always said that being a God-centric community is so much of the power of Gallatin. And while we love everyone, um, Having that faith in God for the majority of our citizens, I really think makes us a different community. So thank you for finding a ministry that's going to reach even more people and serve people in new and unique ways because you're doing, you're doing Jesus' work. So thank you for that. Um, I appreciate you. I love you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And please um, know that we as a city always want to be a good partner with all of the entities in our community. And... Um, let us know how we can do better. Again, my sincere thanks. You may have noticed a few of us stepping up here on the stage. Uh, we're going to introduce you to them one by one. And they represent uh, some of what the Sumner Center is about, some of the, uh, the major areas that are going on. I wish we could have had time to have gotten everyone up here today, but I knew that most of you wanted to go home at some point today. So what we're going to do in areas that are not mentioned, uh, we're going to make some videos about those. We're going to show them as promos in our Sunday services and on social media. So what you're hearing today is just a snippet of things that are going on by some uh, uh, very wonderful uh, people. So, uh, you know, I could tell you all about the Sumner Center, and, uh, but there is someone here who can do so much more than I am. Uh, several years ago, when we first mentioned in, in this setting uh, the Sumner Center, there was someone sitting in our office, uh, or I mean in our audience, and I think at that point, little did Bill and Lisa Jacoby know that they were the answer to a prayer that we had been praying. A prayer that God would send someone with uh, not only the experience and the skill set and perhaps most valuable the time to lead an effort like this. And uh, Bill has really been the driving force around making sure this center happened. First, I want to just recognize uh, Bill. Thank you.
You know, Bill, I might say Lisa as well because I know that uh, it is hard to do anything without someone making some sacrifices, and often it is our spouses that make those sacrifices. So, you know, for all of us who have been involved at Northville a while and even been involved in the parking lot because just after Bill retires from, like, VP of North American Operations for New Balance, he takes on the heavy job of making sure our parking lot team is on task. So a lot of you first met Bill in the parking lot. But, Bill, for those who don't know you, Give us a little bit about your history and just your family. Well, about five years ago, my wife Lisa and I moved here from Cincinnati. And uh, the first thing we did was we looked around Gallatin to find a church home. And the things that we were looking for was, first of all, a place that was welcoming and friendly. Secondly, and most importantly, Christ-centered. We were looking for non-denominational and contemporary. And then we were also looking for a church that was really involved in the community. It wasn't just about the walls that they were within, but the walls that are outside and serving the community. And one day we saw the, uh, the mission, uh, the Northfield mission up on a wall, which is, you know, love God, love people, and make Jesus known. And it was so obvious to us right away that that was more than just something that was written on the walls. It was something that we saw out in the community. And then about it was like four, four months later, we were in a, in a service, and Tom shared a vision of this thing called the Sumner Center. And Lisa and I are big believers that you have to listen to the Holy Spirit to determine big decisions in your life. And we were walking out in the parking lot uh, that day to back to our car, and she looked over at me, and I looked over at her, and I said, did you hear what I heard? And we said, yeah, we found our church home. So we, we knew Northfield was our home at that point in time. And then a few months later, Tom was making the rounds of life groups to talk a little bit at the Sumner Center. He came to our life group, and he talked about the Sumner Center. And afterwards, I just went up to him, and we'd met a few times, and I went up to him, and I said, you know, I'd love to get a few people together and just help make this a reality because the vision is great, and we need some people to get going on it. You know, what I love from that is that uh, we decided from the very beginning that we weren't going to wait to start doing good until something was built. That God would give us a tool, but we were going to dive in where we are. So from that meeting, you and I got together. We decided to make a, just an announcement. Who is interested in starting now, even before we have a facility? So many people signed up, and you started meeting with them. And uh, one of the things that you and your team discovered, there were three areas that, uh, that you really had to get going at the very beginning to make for a successful center. What were those three areas? Yeah, we just had a, a small group of people together, and we decided there's three things we needed to do. First, identify the who, because there's a lot of unmet needs out in the world and in our community, and we need to decide which segment of the population we wanted to serve so we had good focus. Second thing was once we identified the who, what was it that were the needs that were being met of that population, and what were the unmet needs or maybe even the underserved needs where we could play a role as the Sumner Center. Then the third part was the how, and there's a lot of work that has been and currently is going on as to how best to serve those needs that we identified. You know, uh, as your team worked through that process, uh, you discovered that there are a lot of good things happening in Summer County, and we did not want to compete with those things. And that led us to a word that we have come to believe is such a kingdom word, the word partnerships. Uh, you know, uh, tell us how that word partnership has uh, played into what you've decided to do. Well, one of the wonderful things about the team that was out there was we were inspired by a lot of existing groups that were doing incredible kingdom work. And we talked about it and we said, you know, why would we want to reinvent something that already exists when we can just help out an existing group and work together, which is biblically what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be doing kingdom work together. So in some places there were gaps where there were no services available. A dental might be an example. But there were other places like Deborah Alston, who you meet in just a few minutes with a stay warm shelter, just doing amazing work, and why not just work together with her as opposed to inventing something new? Same thing with Habitat as we met Kate and her team and saw all the great work that was going on with Habitat. You know, what a great opportunity to, fight a, to, to provide affordable housing by partnering with them. You know, so, you know, as we went through there, we realized this thing is growing legs. It is getting so much bigger than what we could do. And with all just of the construction things that you were managing, you came and said, we've got to find someone that we can bring in now who can start that process of being boots on the ground day to day in the center to keep it going. Uh, tell us how that went and who you found. Well, as, God, as Tom mentioned, God has this incredible way of, of putting people in your lives just at the right time. And we were blessed with an incredible candidate pool for people to be the director of the Sumner Center. And that's a blessing just to start with. But one person in particular really stood out in that interview, interview pool, and that was Mackenzie Maylander. So we hired her to be the Sumner Center director. She's been on ground now for six months, uh, getting programs started, uh, learning all the, the people and learning the areas. And I just thought it would be a wonderful opportunity for you all to meet Mackenzie and have her tell you a little bit about herself. Amen. 
Mackenzie, tell us a little bit about you. I would love to. Um, for those of you I've not had the chance to meet yet, my name is Mackenzie Maylander. Um, my family and I have been coming here for probably about four years now. We moved down from Wisconsin and we left a great church family and a great church home. But I can say we fell in love all over again when we found Northfield. Um, the first thing I really noticed was the way that this group went all out for their night to shine. Being in the special education field and that being my degree, it it tugged on my heartstrings a little bit. Um, and it just, it meant so much to find a place like that. So then I started to look into the Sumner Center and what that meant and meeting with Bill, learning all those programs. Um, and I felt like my degree, my background, my experience, and really my passions lied with that. And so my next step was to go out and make a plan for what the Sumner Center would look like if I was the one to run it. And I took that plan and I showed up at the job interview and gave it all that I could for you guys. Well, uh, you, when you showed up, you showed up in a big way. I mean, you had researched everything we had already done. You had the names of everybody in town who was doing something. It made such an impression on us. You know, and I think that is what, uh, I see that same drive as you continue the day-to-day -day operations as well. Well, you know, for over a year now, the teams have been meeting. Uh, uh, as you've hammered out that who that Bill was uh, talking about at the beginning, uh, tell us where your team landed on the who that the Sumner Center will actually focus on? Yeah, so we discovered that there's usually three different groups that everyone falls into. So that first group being crisis. These are the people who don't have housing or they don't have food. Um, they don't know where their next meal is coming from. They don't know how to pay that bill that's coming up, whatever that looks like for them. And a lot of government assistance programs, whether they know it or not, are geared towards them. Um, so then on the other end of the spectrum, we've got our stable friends. Um, these are the people that they have a house. They can pay their rent. They know where their meals are coming from. And they're often the people that are able to help everybody else that is in the other stages of life. And then we fall right in the middle. And our middle people are what we're calling surviving. Um, they're the people that have a job, but that job doesn't have enough upward mobility to get them to a point where they could be thriving on their own. Um, these people often can pay their rent, can buy the food, but sometimes it comes down to, do I buy this medication or do I buy food for the week? Do I pay this electric bill or do I pay my internet bill? Um, it's a lot of really hard choices in the middle, and that's the group that we really fell in. I don't want to say fell in love with, but it is. We fell for that group, and we want to make sure that that group feels seen. So that is where we landed. We know what we discovered in that surviving group that you may not know is that, uh, kind of like you mentioned, as they uh, leave crisis and get to a point there where they're surviving, but they're not thriving yet, a lot of governmental assistance programs fall off, and there's a huge gap there. In fact, the United Way in uh, Middle Tennessee came up with a scale called Alice. We've got a, a picture of it up here. But as you can see uh, on the screen, in that Alice projection there in the light blue, that's 33% of the population of Sumner County fall into that. I'm no longer in crisis mode, but I still struggle with bills. I still struggle with, with dental care, with health care, with feeling like... I have enough to provide for my family. Kind of give us an explanation of that 33%. So that 33% are the people who are living above the declared poverty line, but still below the average cost of living. So when we talk about cost of living in this sense, it is rent or mortgage, so it's housing. And as I'm sure everyone is aware, Sumner County's housing is rising very, very quickly. And so with that, that group is growing in just astronomical numbers. It's people who have normally been able to cover their rent or their mortgage and no longer can. And so we'll, we've seen that 33% just kind of creeping up on us. Um, and that's the group that we really want to jump in and assist so we can get them from that surviving stage up to where they could be thriving and that's done through all of the groups that are on stage as well as our budgeting and all that kind of things to really just get them stable. Well, I love that focus and because of that we've got people up here with us who kind of represent some of the different stages. I know you and Bill are going to be around in the auditorium, uh, out in the lobby and down in the Sumner Center later on to answer anyone's questions uh, that they may have. But for the remainder of the group up here, we really, uh, if you look down here, we're going from, uh, from crisis mode Hopefully, as you, as you work around getting people into a, a stable mode of uh, living. The first one that we wanted to...
wanted to meet you with is a lady that we have absolutely fallen in love with. Her name is Minister Deborah Austin. And uh, Minister Austin, we are so blessed to have you with us today. Uh, I wanted for just a minute, if you have, I, I know your husband is here with us, but tell us a little bit about who you are and your family. Uh, hello, Northville. <laughs> hello. <laughs> I'm actually with my uh, husband. His name is Terry Barr. Uh, he's probably the, the other half of the uh, Stay Warm Shelter because he actually does all the work, a whole lot of strenuous work. <clears throat> um, and Minister Sylvia, who actually started with me, um, she is sick today, so she wasn't able to come. You know, so, uh, but thank you all. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Minister Austin, you know, when it comes to the homeless population in Sumner County, you have really been, for the last, I, I don't know how many years, uh, going. you have been the driving force in making sure that something happened in Sumner County. And you started with the Stay Warm Shelter. Tell us the, the why and the how you got involved with this segment of our society who consider themselves homeless. Um, well, first of all, when God calls you to do something, you just do it. Mm -hmm. Just you just do it, <laughs> you know. Uh, the word says that many are called, but few are chosen. He calls a whole lot of us, but then he chooses. You know, I'm gonna let you do this. I'm gonna let you do that. Um, and actually, I've been working with homeless for years. I am a retired firefighter, uh, medic, and you know. But so I, when I first moved to Tennessee about 20 years ago. You know, I've just started working with homeless people. You know, so when I actually moved to Sumner County, I ended up meeting a whole lot of them, being on the board of directors at Gallatin Cares and a couple of other things, you know. But my heart actually goes out for those that cannot help themselves, you know. Um, and so that's actually how I started working with them. You know, you, you got to be, you got to have some kind of compassion to even be a firefighter. Most people running out of fires. We running in. <laughs> you know, so. That's right. That's right. You know, I, love, I wrote down one of the things that you said. You said, when God called me, it didn't matter if anyone else was doing it. And a lot of people wait for, to get a team with them. You said, he called me. And I knew that if he called me, he wanted me to do something. So you answered that call. Tell us uh, kind of what your weekends looked like when you said, okay, I'm going to tackle this. Even if I'm the only one doing it right now. Walk us through one of those weekends. Oh, my God. My prayer time is 4 o'clock in the morning. So while many people are sleeping, I'm up praying. So I actually get up at 4 o'clock. And actually, when God called us, Minister Sylvia is a retired nurse, cancer survivor. You know, like I said, I'm a retired firefighter on active treatments now. You know, uh, so energy level is kind of low. So I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I do my little praying. And then we just start trying to figure out what we're going to do, where we're going to go that day. You know, so by the time we get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, we do not go back to sleep until Saturday in the afternoons because we have, like, all day long trying to get the center together where the people are going to come Friday night. Minister Sylvia at first did all the cooking. We actually, for the first three years, supported the center. Like I said, I'm a retired firefighter, so I went back out and got me a job so that all my money could go to um, running the Stay Warm Shelter. She also did the same thing, you know, so, but we, you know, pack lunches, she cooked, we bring it down to the center, we pack it all up, and then we wait for the people, go, go out to pick up the people. Then we bring them back to the center, feed them. Uh, some of them not coming to the center, so we actually deliver food that night. Um, oh, Lord, it's, 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 it's a long process. Most people think just feeding somebody, and that's it. But no, I actually have doctor's appointments. I have getting people on Social Security. I have, it's a lot. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a whole lot. But God provides. He, he gives you the strength, you know. And, and so, like I said, we, after the center closes that night, Minister Silver and I still have food to deliver the next day, that Saturday. You know, so we don't get home till maybe about 4 o'clock after spending the night at the center all night. You know, so by the time we hit the bed at 4 o'clock, that's it for us. <laughs> you, know, that's it for us so. you know, I love what you said. We've got a picture of, uh, of a guy that 
really was one of your first. It's a little bit blurry. It came from a camera phone, but I think you can make it out. There you are talking with this gentleman that you got his permission to kind of share a little bit about his story. Uh, tell us where, what exciting happened this weekend from this encounter from you answering God's call years ago. We actually, this is Albert, and most of you all have probably seen him if you, he was rolling around in a wheelchair over by Dollar General, you know, just a lot of people stopped and giving money. Um, so we've been dealing with Albert for the last five years. Um, he had been out on the street for years. Um, so we got involved with him. We were feeding him breakfast and, and lunch and dinner and and Abbott is a handful. I am his legal conservator, but he is a handful, you know. So you got to kind of have tough skin because I've been called everything from A to Z. And after a while, I started wondering, well, is my name that really that? You know, so I'm just like, what? You know, but let me tell you about Albert. We went to, he went to treatment. I sent him to treatment. And I used to send all of my people to Cookville because they have a really good mission there. And I was trying to get him out of the environment he was used to. Um, but he stayed in treatment for a year up there. And guess what? This weekend, I went to his, he has an apartment now. Um, yes, he has an apartment. So I was up there yesterday trying to get it all together for him to move in. So it's been a long journey with Albert, but he is now, you know, getting ready from going from homelessness to moving into his own apartment. He still needs a few things in it, but I just thank God, you know, that the road was long and it was rough, but sometimes you just got to stick it through. You know, he tried everything he could to ruin me off. I said, the devil is a lie. <laughs> God assigned me to you, brother. You stuck with me. <laughs> so thank God for that, you know, so that's Albert, y'all. Well, hey. So we, we meet you through an article. Actually, the first time I heard about you, Jim Schreiner gave me an article where you had been written up in the Gallatin Examiner for what you were doing. I give that to Bill. We end up, uh, we end up meeting you and uh, seeing how we could work together uh, to enhance what you were doing. And uh, so uh, a group of people got together and said, Miss uh, uh, Austin, what can we do to help you? How has the partnership with Northfield and the Sumner Center helped your life? Well, first of all, I, I really want to thank Northfield. I really want to take, thank Bill. It, it, first of all, for me and Minister Sylvia, it added 10 years to our life. Because <laughs> I'm telling you, we just two old people trying to, trying to just make it, you know. And uh, you all came in with some other churches. You started cooking the food, because like I said, you know, Minister Sylvia was cooking all the food. We were hauling it down to the center, trying to put it together. But you all stepped in and, and started cooking the food, which kind of let us be able to do other things that we really needed to do and kind of took the burden off of us from having to do that part. You know, and I, I'm telling you, you just don't know, honey. God said he'll send your helpers. And he sure sent Northfield, I'm telling you. And I, I couldn't be more... Uh, um, thankful that God placed you all in our lives, you know, to help us with this mission, you know, so that's, it's well, just been a blessing. Thank you. I want to thank you for being here with us today. It's been a pleasure. And I wish we had more time. I know after you and Jackie are going to be in the green room over here. Most of our people know it's right out these doors. If people have any questions they want to ask you or how to get more involved in the Stay Warm Shelter. And again, you can do that through our connection card today as well. But uh, uh, just one of the other things that, that we have, one of our own members, uh, Jackie Pascarello. Uh, you know, when, uh, when, when she heard that we were going to have a food pantry within this, well, that was something that was close to Jackie's heart and uh, she said I want to be involved in that so uh, uh, Jackie tell us just a little bit about what led you to want to be involved in the uh, food pantry that we were doing well I was looking for an opportunity to get more engaged in the church and some of the activities that they have and as part of the Sumner Center and my husband and I are next door neighbors to Bill Jacoby everybody knows Bill and Lisa <laughs> um, and so we talked with them and they actually are the ones that brought us to the church and in working with him, and he was talking about the Sumner Center, and he talked specifically about trying to get together a food pantry, a means of bringing food out into the community to people and to feed them. And that is a personal passion I have. 
and showed up just like anybody else to volunteer in one of those very first weeks. And from there, we became uh, quite a ministry to the, those in need in the uh, community. Amen. You know, we look at it from this end. And, uh, you know, um, just looking at your life and at John's life, if you think back on it, nobody looking from the outside would think that you had a need in the world or had ever struggled with this. But you had a personal reason for wanting to get involved in this. Uh, we don't have time to go into that whole story today, but uh, it, it touched you, didn't it? It did. As a child and a young person, I grew up in an environment where we had severe food insecurity issues. So I personally know what it's like to starve. Jeez. So it's very, very important to me to feed anyone that we possibly can. And I feel that I bring that passion into the food pantry, which has just brought in some great volunteers. And when we get together and you see the look on the faces of the people that you're handing a food box to, there's nothing more beautiful. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us how, walk us through that process down in the Summer Center of what you do from, uh, from the time you get the food or even how you get the food all the way to you getting in the hands of someone who actually needs it the most. Well, Monday mornings are a busy day for several of us in the church. We end up with about 15, sometimes as much as 18 volunteers. My husband and I pull up out front here outside the main doors and we pick up all of the green bags that you've brought. You'll see these. The green bags are hanging at all the entrances, and inside is a card. If you take one of these bags home and you just pick up a few things and put it in there, we pick those bags up, carry them around back, and then we have um, food delivered from Second Harvest. And again, thanks to some amazing volunteers who get up early, drive to a location here in Gallatin, load up their personal trucks and trailers, and haul the food back here to church. Then there's a group of us waiting for them. We unload all of the... Um, uh, cartons from the, the trailers and we put them into the food pantry and then we separate it. We empty the bags, we separate the product, we put it on the shelves. And then from there, we start making boxes, physically assembling and taping the boxes together. And then once we have 200, 250 boxes made, then we start an assembly line and we start filling those boxes. And then we store them, we put them on pallets and we hold on to them until it's time for the monthly food giveaway. But in between that time, there are folks in need that come to the church during the week, and we always have boxes made that we can give away to families in need. I love that. Uh, we put together about 250 boxes at least every single month, and that's just kind of what goes out in the community. Now, I know when we first started, we were right here on campus, and then we ended up leaving and going out. Tell us how that came about. Well, that very first big food giveaway here on campus, we were going to start at, I believe, 9 o'clock in the morning, and a group of us were here about 6.30 a.m. The cars had already begun to line up. Mm -hmm. They wrapped around the building. We gave away every single food box that we had. And we still had a couple cars coming in after we took the signs down. And so I said, of course, we'll get you another box. So my husband and I went downstairs and put together a couple more boxes because I just couldn't quite watch those cars pull away empty. So um, from there, it became such an exciting time to say, hey, how can we make this bigger and better? And from there, it's a little challenging sometimes for folks to be able to come to us. And we were finding multiple families per vehicle mm -hmm. and trying to get them enough food boxes when there's three or four families in this small little vehicle. So we have tried in a couple of different ideas, all of which worked to a certain level of success. And then we now take our boxes in a trailer, load up, and we go to, thanks to Habitat for Humanity, who owns a lot in an area of need here in town, we take the food to those in need now. And then they just pull on up and we hand out boxes. Wow. Amen. Hey, I love that. Uh, you know, one of the things that you told me, and that's maybe where we'll end today, you said it's important to you. <laughs> you guys go out there in the, in the rain, if it's cold, if it's windy. And uh, you said, these people are counting on us. Tell us what you meant by that. It really goes back to echo what Mackenzie said a few minutes ago. When you're hungry, 
if you can count on that box of food, you will make different choices that month. Mm -hmm. You might pay your rent. I think Mackenzie said your electric bill, but here's what she said that was really important. You make medication decisions. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I can count on food, I can buy my meds. If I can't count on that box of food, I'm going to have to make some hard, painful choices mm -hmm. for myself and my children. So we make sure, rain or shine, last Saturday, um, we were giving our boxes away and we had tr trunk or treat that afternoon. Well, there was a group of us on the corner. We were wet, we were soggy, our signs bled. Mackenzie made these beautiful signs and all the marker was washing off them, but we had a wonderful time. And if I can, Pastor, as a result, we had a gentleman come to church last Sunday because he wanted to thank us for giving him a food box and for those that prayed with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, for the sake of time, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, just let me tell you what has happened. Over 15,000 pounds of food from Second Harvest Food Bank. Over 50,000 or 16,000 pounds of food that you guys have brought in through the Green Bag Program. By the time we have the food day in December, you guys will have provided over, you want to give the number? 100,000 meals. 100,000 meals. <laughs> and then one last thing, exciting, uh, exciting thing ab about this, uh, uh, there is a, a picture, I think, of a trailer that's going to be up on the screen. Tell us what your dreams are for that trailer, Jackie. Oh, we've got several dreams coming up. One of the things that we're looking forward to is starting a Fresh and Frozen program. Once we get the Sumner Center completed in certain areas, and of course we're going to, we have the equipment, but to be able to um, set up a system to provide that. Second is a multi-use trailer. Mm. Right now we just have a box trailer and we fill the boxes in, but here we can serve food and what's important tornadoes, natural disasters. This trailer will provide so much more functionality and flexibility for us to get even deeper into the community than what we are right now. So this is something we're very excited about. Amen. I think it is wonderful. And just for you guys' information, one thing that we weren't actually planning on that happened, I think we have a picture of one of the people on our prayer team, Janet Wyndham. What we discovered at the last few few days, the line for prayer was longer than the line for food, yes. which told us that there are, there are not only people physically looking for something, there are people spiritually looking for something. Well, Jackie, thank you so thank much you. For, uh, uh, for what you do and for leading this uh, ministry down there with your team of volunteers. Hey, the next person I want to introduce you to is Kate Ritchie. Kate is the executive director of, of Habitat for Humanity. And you know, when we're looking at, uh, at people getting into consistent housing, uh, one most recent report from this last year, I don't know if you guys know, it listed Sumner County as one of the 10 most unaffordable places, not in Tennessee, but the entire country of which to live now. Uh, can you give us a little bit about the concept around Habitat for Humanity? Yes, thank you for having me. I'm so grateful to be here today. At Habitat, we have a vision that everybody deserves a decent place to live, and we do that by putting forth our mission, which is putting God's love into action and bringing to people together to build homes, community, and hope. And we do it right here in Sumner County. I, I love that. Uh, tell us, you know, there's a misconception out there that Habitat for Humanity is giving a house away, that, that you just give that away. But that's not the case. Can you give us a little bit of the requirements that a potential homeowner has to go through for getting into a house? Yes, definitely. We don't give houses away. Um, we do offer affordable mortgages. And how to um, be a part of our program is you have to show the need, the willingness to partner, and the ability to pay. And showing the need, there's a lot of individuals that are living in overcrowding situations, don't have stable housing, paying more than half their income on rent, um, and then it comes back to what bills are you going to pay. Um, showing your willingness to partner. You have to take educational classes, financial budgeting classes for about 12 to 18 months while you're in the program. And then the um, ability to pay. So we do work with families that are at 80% area media income or below, just like what the Alice study showed. Um, and so we make sure that they have an affordable mortgage. You know, uh, one of the things that uh, I like about what you were doing, uh, you talked about the, the, 
your people that are going to be moving into the house as a potential candidate, they've got to go through 32 hours of classes. Uh, eight hours are at the state level, but then 24 of those hours, you guys are you're sending them to Franklin and some other places to do that. We found out that was one huge way we could partner, we could partner with you. Tell us about uh, uh, that part of the financial counseling piece that we can help with. Yes, I'm so excited to announce this partnership is that we are going to be working with Northfield Church where our partner family is going to be coming here to learn about their financial education, working to get their credit scores up, getting debt paid off, learning how to budget and prioritize which bills to pay, um, also working through legal issues that they may have due to collections and things of that nature. And so Northfield's going to be um, helping us by putting those classes on. I am excited about that part, and I'm also excited about kind of a pilot program here in uh, Southern County that you guys are doing, uh, one that I had the opportunity to be, uh, uh, to be at and to pray over, but you've got two of these now uh, that are in the works. Tell us about the things that are coming up. Yes, um, in the past, we've been in Sumner County since 1993, and we've built 65 homes here, but we've always done, we purchase a lot, we raise the money, we build the home, and so this past year, we broke ground on our very first neighborhood, Pafford Place, which is named after longtime volunteers in Sumner County, Robbie and Gordon Pafford, and we're going to be building nine single-family homes here for nine very deserving families, and then after that, um, where y'all do pass out your food, Food boxes at the corner of West Eastland and Dorothy Jordan. We're going to be building 42 affordable townhomes. And yes. The need for affordable housing, as you stated, it is very great here in Sumner County, and we are a piece to that puzzle. And our goal is to build 50 houses over the next five to 10 years, depending on funding, and um, house some families that are just truly deserving and have worked hard in order to get that home over their head. Just very quickly, tell us what it means for a family to get their own home. Providing home ownership for families, a lot of times it just provides that stability. They've been moving from home to home, and um, their kids are going from different schools. A lot of families might have some health issues, and their homes are not accessible for their families. And providing that stability, knowing that they're in a safe place, that they have decent shelter over their head, and the ability to pay what their monthly mortgage is, it just provides that security and that strength to go from, as we were talking about earlier, the surviving to the thriving. Well, I know you're going to be uh, at the I'm in station, which is just uh, right out these doors here after we dismiss today. you are also got a table set up in the gym for anyone who wants to learn more about Habitat for Humanity. And we as a church, we're going to just go ahead and commit in advance. We're going to help. Uh, we're, we want to work with you through that, not only through financial counseling, but, but through the other avenues that we can as well. So, Kate, thank you for being a part today and being thank with you. us. Thank you. You know, as you mentioned, uh, uh, a lot of times bringing up housing, Lorraine, if you will just take that microphone, yeah, a lot of times bringing up housing, and they cautioned me from the back not to put your hand on that bottom receiver there. There, I think that was the message I was getting. Like, I was trying to read the code from back there at the back. Uh, tell us, you work with a, a company called, uh, well, a nonprofit that's fairly new, Compassionate Council. Tell me what you guys do. So, Compassionate Council was founded by Nick. Tidwell. And what we've done is we've partnered together with Northfield. I'll be the point person. And we believe that um, we show Christ's love by providing legal counsel and guidance to families that can otherwise not afford to get legal counsel. It's really an access to justice program. We believe that everybody should be able to um, get those questions answered. And we do try to make sure that, you know, we define uh, able to pay loosely. So if you're saving for a house, if you're maybe making a decision on paying medical bills, we want you to be able to get the legal help that you require. You know, and uh, you mentioned to us that you're faith-based. I loved uh, just your website, you, right on the very front, it's a verse from Isaiah, to seek justice, correct the oppressor, defend the rights of the fatherless, and plead the widow's cause. Uh, I'm excited that you're going to have a place in the Sumner Center, uh, but uh, uh, tell me uh, just one more time, what kind of legal counsel or, or questions, if somebody was saying, 
how can I come or what do I need to have? Tell us how that works. You might have questions that deal with family law issues. Perhaps you have a child and you want to work on getting visitation. I've actually worked on having uh, people get custody back. Um, if there's a child support issue, uh, if you're you know, in a situation where maybe you have a debtor-creditor uh, fight going on and you don't think you owe as much money as they're saying you do, uh, we could help you with um, negotiating with those uh, creditors. Um, or maybe it's just something you know, dealing with a conservatorship. You might have a special needs child and you worry about that child's future. We can help you with the legal ins and outs for that. And also trust and estates planning. I love doing will planning for people. And you might not know if you need a will, and so we're gonna encourage people, even if you can afford to pay, if you're interested in a will seminar, we're happy to hold those classes here. I love that part. You know, one of the things when we were talking, you said, we may not be able to solve your issue that day, but we can get you started down the right path. And then you mentioned something that I don't always hear mentioned in the same sentence, attorneys and prayer. And I know that attorneys pray, but in, in the grand scheme of things, I don't always hook those two things together. Tell me what you meant there. Yes, I do like to pray before I go into court. Um, <laughs> but... We uh, sometimes have people come in and, and they might have been served with divorce papers and they don't want a divorce. And they come to us and they're like, well, what can I do? And I might not be able to do anything um, at all. You know, the inevitable might be happening. There are, there are consequences to actions. You might be facing um, some sort of matter where, you know, maybe there's an eviction notice. Um, but we can pray together. We, we can always turn things over to God. God does work miracles. And sometimes that prayer is what someone really needs. And I think anything is possible with Christ. I've seen miracles happen. I love that. Uh, you know, uh, just as we were wrapping up, you're also involved in Celebrate Recovery. And you said, you said, you know, I think what Celebrate Recovery does and what you through Compassionate Counsel do are compatible. Uh, you said both of them give the people the tools they need. Both are confidential. And uh, I thank you that you're going to be uh, just uh, one of the partners that we have here, that you're going to be out uh, front and in the uh, gym today if people have any questions for you. So, Loretta, thank you so much for showing up today. And thank you, Northfield. And you may not remember this, Loretta was baptized just a, a, a couple of months ago right here at Northfield. Uh, well, uh, you know, last on this uh, uh, list that we've got up here today is uh, one of the things or two of the things that take a family, sometimes they may be getting right to that, that, that thriving mode but can set them back, is legal work and it is medical or dental work. Uh, many of you know Dr. Stephanie Harding. She sings on our praise team here. Uh, and uh, through a generous grant, Stephanie and, uh, uh, well, she went to work for a, a man named Dr. Uh, Barkley. And Richard Barkley decided that he was going to retire at some point. So as he began to wind down, uh, Stephanie actually bought that practice. And then Dr. Barkley and Stephanie donated that entire practice to Sumner Center. And when you take a tour today, you're going to see that center downstairs. And I would be remiss if I did not thank Jeff Halsey and Nashville Dental for uninstalling it transporting it here and reinstalling it down in our basement. So whenever you see Jeff in Nashville Dental. But Stephanie, tell us why dental care matters to people who are trying to move from this surviving stage to thriving. Well, outside of the obvious for just health reasons, I mean, we need to have healthy mouths to have a healthy body. But also, you know, our smiles and the way we speak and communicate is so important for helping us to get to that next stage of life. And if you have poor self-esteem or you feel like, you know, you're embarrassed, then you're probably not going to interview as well. And unfortunately, although we don't really like to admit it, those kinds of things, how we look, do come into play when, when people, you know, give a job to somebody. So, you know, we want to help people be healthy, but we also want to help them be able to take that next step and to become more stable. Well, what, who are the people that struggle the most with getting good dental care? Well, the same population that we've been talking about all morning, um, you know, if you don't have a stable job that offers you dental insurance, dental care is extremely expensive. Um, there are government assistance programs, but like Medicaid and TenCare, those, those programs in dentistry stop at age 21. 
So if you're an adult over the age of 21 and you don't have good affordable dental insurance, then your ability to get dental care is, is greatly reduced. So, yeah. Well, one of the things I'm excited about is something that you guys have planned uh, uh, that uh, has been in the works for a while. It is a dental day on December 4th. Tell us what you're going to be doing that day. Well, that's kind of our, our first big push for the, the Sumner Central Sumner Center Dental Clinic, and it will be, like he said, December the 4th from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m., and our goal is to just see as many people as we can. Um, for this first dental day, our, my goal is to try to help people get out of any acute emergent problems. Um, eventually, we want to start doing restorative care fillings and things like that, but there's a lot of people out there who just have a, a bad tooth, an abscess, and they can't they can't get along just because of the pain. So we're going to be doing a lot of extractions that day on, on uh, teeth that just need to come out. We'll also be offering exams and cleanings um, to people that day also. Now you've got how many dentists coming in to help you out that day? And We're still recruiting. So if anybody knows a dentist that wants to participate, but I've got at least five, six now that have committed um, that we're also looking for auxiliary personnel, so dental assistants, dental hygienists, and then just general volunteers also that could come in and, and step in where we need them. Now, what role can a, just a person play if you're not a dental professional? Well, aside from the clinical part, the dental day, there's a lot that goes on. I mean, from getting people parked and checked in, and while they're waiting, they have to, you know, they have to go from station to station. So general volunteers, they could help with those sort of things. Um, the same as what happens on the food handout days. We would love to have prayer partners, people that are there to help people with their spiritual needs as well. So um, cooking, giving, we'd like to give people, uh, you know, some refreshments, maybe something warm to drink while they're waiting, all those kinds of things we could use general volunteers for. And you developed a card here on your own. Tell us how people can... Uh find out about. Well, I just made this little card so that maybe sometime today, if you're interested in helping specifically with the dental day on the 4th, um, I'll have these kind of sitting around and on the back there's, we seem to love QR codes around here. There's QR codes on here. And um, one side is for dental professionals and that's that's even or medical professionals. If you have any kind of uh, medical background and you want to scan that side and sign up, um, and then the other side is for general volunteers. And um, we're getting very close to the 4th, so um, the more volunteers that we can get, the better. So, thank you. So we are less than one month away from a dental day. You're going to have time today to tour the dental clinic downstairs. Uh, Stephanie, at different points in the day because she's going to be here. Uh, she's going to be down there as well. Well, hey, give it up for all of, uh, all of the people today. I will close us out if you want to be making, well, let me tell you, I just, I'm just going to go down here. You can just stay up here if you want to, or, you know, you might need to get in place in the green room and the, uh, the, uh, the wherever y'all are going to be. The I'm in center right over here. If you want to make your way over there now, uh, I will give a few last minute instructions. You know, guys, you may be seated for just a second. Uh, what I haven't even mentioned today is uh, extended embrace services for families with special needs, Gigi's uh, Playhouse. Uh, we have mentioned the Special Needs Sports Foundation, 60 uh, people with special needs who are coming every Thursday night. We haven't mentioned job skills, resume building, or job placement. We haven't mentioned the Cumberland Crisis Pregnancy Center, all who are going to have uh, tables and things in our gym area and that which we're partnering with. Uh, you know, um, we started almost every one of these programs before we got a building built because we decided that to be the church, it wasn't about a building, it was about a people, a called out group of people empowered by the Holy Spirit to continue the work of Christ. And you guys made that possible. As you go in the Sumner Center today, you're going to see a wall. And on that wall is the name of every individual that, that, that we have on record who has donated time, who has donated finances to make that happen. If you don't see your name on that wall, and you know you've given something. We have tried our best not to overlook anybody, but you let us know and we will get your name up there. Uh, to, to go on a tour, you'll go right out these doors through the parking lot and down through the main entrance there. And I would love to have personally written a letter to every donor, every business, and every volunteer, but there are over 500 of you who are out there. I'm looking right here at a gentleman who has spent countless hours uh, just making this center possible. And whether you donated time or whether you donated money, I want you to know something. You were a part of changing someone's life. You were a part of life change to somebody. 
So for every man or every woman who will seek a little bit of legal help, who will seek to get their teeth cleaned, or who will just want a box of food, if you ever wondered whether that money you gave matters, I hope that you can see today it matters more than you will ever know. There's a scene I love at the end of Matthew, and for all of us preachers, we like to think that God, you know, he cares about what we do on Sunday, and he cares about, you know, our doctrines and our theology and all of this, and I'm glad we have that, and whoopee and all of that to, to the way we do things. But in the end, what he said to that crowd of people out there in front of him was this. He said, you want to know who's in my kingdom? Who's in a part of spreading my kingdom? It's those people that when they saw hungry people, they fed them. It's those people, when they saw people who were thirsty, they gave them something to drink. It's those people that when people were lonely and in prison, that you took the time and you ministered to them and you visited them. It's the people who were sick and couldn't afford it or for some reason needed something that you said, I want to be a part of bringing healing. It's the people who needed clothes and you said, I'll be a part of that. And his audience looked back and said, like, when did we do all of that stuff? For you, Jesus and Jesus looked back to them and he said some amazing words. He said, inasmuch as you have done those things for any one of my people, well, it was just like you did that for us. I hope that you feel just an enormous sense of, of accomplishment for what God did working through each of us. Not only for what he did, but for what he's going to do. Do. I want to pray for you and then we are going to be dismissed today. I hope that you'll take time to tour the facilities downstairs and that I hope you'll be back at one o'clock. Let me pray for you and you'll be dismissed. Father, thank you so much for, uh, for allowing us to work in your kingdom, just to be called your children, Father, just that you would want us to be a part of something bigger than any one of us could ever be on our own. Thank you. Thank you for all the people who were represented up here today. Thank you for the countless others who, who in big ways and small ways are doing every way we, thing that we can to bring your kingdom to earth. Father, help us to continue to be the hands and feet of Jesus as we make it our mission to love you by loving people and making your name known in all the earth. And the entire church at Northville said, Amen. Amen. You are dismissed.